CRISPR stands for is Clustered Regularly Interspersed Short Palindromic Repeats. The repeats are depicted here by back-to-back -back triangles because they're palindromic. And the repeats are separated from each other by spacers, each with a different DNA sequence. There's a leader to initiate transcription, and there's a terminator to stop transcription. Now, turns out that CRISPR is the immune system in bacteria and archaea. The first step in the, the immune system is immunization. We're depicting a bacterial cell here, and inside the bacterial cell are cast genes. The cast genes encode a multi-subunit protein called CAS. CAS stands for CRISPR-associated protein. Now, what happens when the cell is infected by phage? The phage is a virus that injects its DNA into the bacterial cell. That DNA is destined to go on and do its dirty work. But if the bacterial cell survives, it's going to use the Cas system to develop a memory for what happened. And what can happen is that the Cas system will process the phage DNA into spacers. So the spacers are actually phage sequences. And then that spacer is incorporated into the CRISPR array so that now that blue sequence appears in the array. So now the bacteria is ready just in case it's going to be infected again. So that's the second step, which is immunity. The CRISPR array can be transcribed into pre-CRISPR RNA. Turns out the palindromic sequences are sites for cleavage. <coughs> so the cleavage generates CRISPR RNAs. I'm only showing you one of them, the blue one, but the others are there as well. The Cas system can make Cas protein, which associates with the CRISPR RNAs. Now, what happens this time if the phage tries to infect the same bacterial cell? It injects its DNA into the cell, but this time the CRISPR-Cas system takes that DNA and chews it up. So, how does it do that? Well. The CRISPR RNA base pairs with the phage DNA. If <clears throat> the phage DNA has a sequence, PAM, which stands for proto spacer associated module, then the CRISPR system will chew up the DNA. So I'm, on the other hand, the CRISPR array itself lacks PAM sequences. As a result, the system doesn't digest itself, preventing autoimmunity. So, the CRISPR-Cas9 system makes double strand breaks in DNA. In Streptococcus pyogenes, it turns out that a single polypeptide performs all the Cas functions. So it's a single polypeptide with multiple domains um, instead of multiple proteins. Cas9 cutting can be directed by a single guide RNA, provided you do a little genetic engineering, which we'll talk about in a minute. The Cas9 
PAM is short. It's a nucleotide followed by two Gs. And Cas9 cuts both DNA strands. So I'm showing you here the CRISPR RNA that can base pair to the target DNA, which is here. Now, if the CRISPR RNA has another RNA associated with it, a tracer RNA for transactivating CRISPR RNA, which base pairs with the CRISPR RNA, uh, then it can do its job. And you can make this into a single RNA molecule by putting in a linker loop. Okay. So once you have all these parts ready to go, and the target DNA includes PAM sequences, then the whole thing is held together by the Cas9 protein. to actually cut both strands of the target DNA. So that's how that works. Turns out that CRISPR-Cas9 can be delivered in a lentivirus. I'm showing here a, a, a rudimentary lentivirus with two long terminal repeats at each end and a puromycin gene that can be used to um, select for cells that take up the lentivirus. But the guts of the system is two transcriptional cassettes. One cassette encodes the single guide RNA, and the other cassette encodes the Cas9 protein. So the CRISPR-Cas9 can make DNA double-strand breaks at the target site. Then the double-strand break is repaired by non-homologous end joining to create a mutation. or if the system is transduced with an oligonucleotide with a very specific sequence, hom homologous recombination can modify the cleaved site. So, how can you apply this system? You can apply this system using GECKO. What does GECKO stand for? GECKO stands for Genome Scale CRISPR Cas9 Knockout. It was applied to look for resistance against the drug vemurafenib. Turns out vemurafenib can treat about 50% of malignant melanomas. That's amazing because prior to vemurafenib, there was no effective treatment against melanoma. But the problem was the drug only works for seven months and then resistance develops. So this group was interested in trying to figure out mechanisms of res resistance. They transduced cells with a lentiviral CRISPR library. And then they grew the cells in remurafenib to find genes that, when mutated, conferred resistance. And they found such genes, which is a very nice demonstration that this system can lead to new discoveries. Should MDs care? Of course. Thank you.